We've covered mega structures, which are the biggest structures you can build in the base game of Stellaris. But what about giga structures? This is a huge mod, like so big it has a 28,000 word Google Doc as documentation. It adds over 40 new structures to the game, scaling from some moderately sized killer structures to the unfathomably large terror structures. Alongside this, the mod pack also adds a bunch of new features to the game, like new origins, traditions, ascension perks, crises, new ship types, ships, and ship components. In this video, I'm going to focus on two things, and the new structures and the resources that come alongside them, since otherwise I'm going to mention a construction material or product, and you're going to wonder what I'm talking about. If you enjoy this video and want to see videos on the other features of this behemoth mod pack, then drop a like and a comment and I might just do that. Now we have a ton to go through here, so let's waste no more time and dive right into this, starting with the resources to clear things up before we get into the structures. Also, if you want to jump around, there will be chapters in the description. So this mod pack adds six new resources. First up, we have Iodizium Crystals. These are created when a supernova goes off and obliterates an entire system. Every surviving celestial body will have one deposit, which can then be harvested upon retaking the system. It is used for powerful energy production and science buildings. Quasaric energy is both produced and consumed by the quasi-stellar obliterator. I'm not going to tell you what that is until later, because it's pretty spectacular. Psionic sublimate is both produced and consumed by the psionic beacon, and again we'll explain that structure when we come to it. Planetary mass can be created by using a decision on any non-solar celestial body, and it's consumed to create attack moons and behemoth planet crafts. Quasi-negative mass is created as an option from stellar particle accelerators and is then used for various monumental constructions. And finally, sentient alloy can be made on planets or in the sentient metal forge. It is used for creating some super late game structures. Now, let's get into the structures. This mod introduces a new four tier system to mega structures going from the smallest killer structures to the gargantuan terror structures. I'm going to go through each of these tiers and also break them up into their own groups based on exactly what they do. Also, I tried my best to get all of these in game to show you what they look like, but in the time I had to make this video, I simply could not find them all. So I'll put some images and other footage in when we come to those. First up, we have the killer structures, and first we have the science structures. These are fairly straightforward since they just provide you with science, so are all of course great earlier on to speed up your research before dropping off in value in the late game once everything is researched. So you want to build these first if you can, and then research the other structures quicker and launch yourself into the lead with that tech snowball. First up, we have the macro engineering testing station. Upon completion, this provides 150 engineering research and plus 2% to armor hit points for all ships in your empire at the cost of 25 energy and 5 alloys upkeep. The Orbital Artificial Ecosystem provides 150 society research and 7% to terraforming speed at the cost of 25 energy and 5 alloys upkeep. Both of these can also be dismantled for 100 energy and it takes 6 seconds and refunds 1,500 alloys. They can also both be built above pretty much any uninhabitable celestial bodies. The Stellar Particle Accelerator is free to dismantle and provides 3500 alloys back. It can only be built around a star that is not a pulsar, a neutron star, or a black hole. And when completed, it provides 150 physics research and plus 2% to shield hit points for all your ships at the cost of 25 energy and 5 alloys upkeep. This structure can also be managed to change the output with the added risk of failure. You can choose to produce 100 physics research and 1 dark matter for a base 5% risk, or you can produce 80 physics research and 0.7 negative mass, which also introduces a base 10% risk. On top of this, you can also increase or decrease the intensity of the accelerator to change the output at the cost of more upkeep and of course more added risk. If the risk is high, there is more of a chance of the accelerator being damaged. When damaged, you are given the choice to spend allies to repair it in 6 months. This sets the risk back to where it was. Repair it half assly in 1 year, which increases the risk of catastrophic failure by 20% once it comes back online. Or ignore the damage, which increases the risk of catastrophic failure by 50%. If catastrophic failure does occur, it simply destroys the accelerator but you can rebuild them for 750 unity and 5,000 alloys. For economy, we only have one killer structure, that is the Asteroid Manufacturer. Of course, it can only be built on asteroids, and it produces 220 consumer goods at the cost of 125 energy and 25 alloys. Now we come to terraforming and habitats. First up, we have the Dynamic Core Igniter. This converts a barren or frozen world into a lifeless temperate world. The final terraforming costs 7,500 energy and takes 3,600 days. The terraformed planet will have no agricultural districts and will have the following modifiers. Plus 10% minerals from food, plus 10% engineering research, plus 15% build speed, and minus 50% food from jobs. The geothermal stabilizer converts a molten world into a lifeless torrid world. The final terraforming cost is the same as the dynamic core igniter, and the planets will have no agricultural districts and will have the following modifiers. Plus 10% minerals from jobs, plus 15% energy from jobs, and minus 50% food from jobs permanently, 
and minus 15% habitability and plus 10% engineering research for 1800 days. The glue converts a shattered or broken world into a molten world. Final terraform cost is of course the same as the other two, and the final planet has no positive or negative modifiers. The macro atmospheric stabilizer converts a gas giant into a habitable gas giant with increased energy and exotic gases production. The final terraforming here takes 10,000 energy and takes 3600 days, and the resulting planet has 7 unique district types if you count variants for different empire types, making them excellent for economy and science. The atmospheric purifier converts a toxic world into a lifeless fogged world, and the terraforming has gone back to 7500 energy, which is now taking 3600 days. The planet will have no agricultural districts, but will have the following modifiers. Plus 10% minerals from jobs, plus 10% physics research, minus 50% food from jobs permanently, minus 10% habitability, and plus 10% society research for 1800 days. And finally we come to our one and only military kilo structure, the asteroid artillery. This must be built on an asteroid and converts it to a stationary defense platform. This can then be upgraded and upgrades cost 500 alloys base and this increases by 30% each level. Upgrade points can be spent on upgrading the asteroid artillery in the following areas. Enhanced payload, flash coolants, calibrated sensors, regenerative hull and precision targeting. Coming now to the mega structures, starting with the economy. First up we have the automated strip mine. This must be built on a rocky world and harvest 250 minerals from the planet at the cost of 75 energy. This removes one size from the planet every two years and becomes useless once the planet reaches a size of two. The crystal megabore must be built above a molten world of size five or greater. It harvests 50 rare crystals and 100 minerals at the cost of 40 energy and 7.5 alloys upkeep. The equatorial shipyard can only be built above molten worlds, size 25 or smaller, without any habitable moons. It allows the construction of a starbase building that provides eight shipyards and itself provides plus 5% to ship build speed empire wide. It also creates a processing ring world around the planet that can be colonized and build up to 12 districts. This also has unique districts and the habitat gains the following modifier, minus 10% happiness and minus 25% mineral upkeep for all jobs. The Kugel Blitz containment silo can be built around any planet, moon or asteroid. It provides 40,000 capacity for all resources and produces 150 energy at the cost of 15 alloys upkeep. The lunar specular fractor must be built around an uninhabitable moon. Once completed, you can choose from one of four options. The lunar light show, which is the default function, reproductive stimulation, which focuses on fast growth population, subliminal indoctrination, which focuses on stability and government pull, and no night protocols, which focuses on production at pretty much all cost. The final three options add 5% to the base 5% failure chance. Once per year this chance is used to determine if a failure event occurs where you can spend 500 rare crystals to fix it immediately or ignore it which comes with a 50% chance of a catastrophic failure which essentially destroys the structure but will allow you to repair it later. The Neutronium Gigaforge can only be built around neutron stars or pulsars and can share the same home as the Nidavellir Hyperforge. The main hub produces 15 engineering research and 75 alloys for 150 energy upkeep. The processing ring produces 50 engineering research and 150 alloys for 300 upkeep and the final stage produces 250 engineering research and 420 nice alloys and plus 7% armor hit points for a cost of 780 energy upkeep. The Penrose Sphere must be built around a black hole. Upon reaching the Sphere stage, you are given a choice to either use the black hole to generate energy or to make it into a bomb. Generating energy chooses the stabilized sphere and produces 650 energy. You can then upgrade it to a ring world, which produces 600 energy and becomes a habitable ring world for 10 alloys upkeep. And then finally, you need to build the two ring world segments. Choosing and then detonating the bomb destroys all planets, asteroids and ships in the system, including the Penrose Sphere. It also inflicts 10,000 damage on all stations and ships in systems in a close proximity to the explosion and all colonizable planets are turned into tomb worlds with additional negative modifiers. All systems within two jumps take 2500 ship and station damage and additional negative modifiers and all high planes within four jumps are removed and randomly regenerated. And finally, the empire that detonates this bomb gets a permanent negative modifier with every other empire in the game, and this varies based on the number and type of planets affected by the detonation. The star lifter must of course be built around a star, and the cost and output varies based on the stellar class. Upon completion, all barren planets are turned into colder barren worlds, and all molten and toxic planets in the system are turned into frozen worlds. And this can't be built around neutron stars, pulsars, or black holes. The suck must be built around a gas giant and in its final stage produces 250 energy, 20 volatile moats, 22 exotic gases for 35 alloys upkeep. This must be built around gas giants with a size more than 5 and can't be built around colonizable gas giants. The suck has finite working time and will last longer on larger planets. Every two years the size of the mined planet is reduced by one and once the gas giant is depleted, the suck will shut down. 
If the initial size of the gas giant is 27 or greater, there is a chance that it will have a diamond core and the suck will continue mining it for minerals and rare crystals. If the gas giant has no diamond core, it will be converted into a barren world with mineral deposits for two exotic gases and two volatile moats. The Idrisil Orchid Complex must be built around a non-moon uninhabitable gas giant, the lab stage produces 50 society research for 10 alloys upkeep. The weather manipulator stage produces 100 society research for 25 energy upkeep and 10 alloys. And the final stage produces 650 food, 300 physics research and 500 society research for 150 energy, 15 unity and 40 alloys upkeep. The preservation sphere produces 6,000 energy, 3,000 quasi-negative mass for 250 sentient metal and one influence upkeep. The psionic beacon must be built around a non-inhabitable planet and produces 200 society research and one psionic sublimate for 100 energy upkeep. This may be activated in six different ways, with each method consuming different amounts of psionic sublimate. Illuminate turns the targeted shrouded world into a lifeless foggy world. Traverse gives 1000% to jump drive range for one year. Conjure spawns four psionic avatar armies on the targeted world. The armies will disappear after defeating and taking the planet. Dominate gives you control over the targeted system, gives all non-robotic pops in that system the enthrall trait, resulting in them not producing any resources and can be reversed through gene tailoring. Robotic pops are, however, destroyed. Augment targets an admiral with either their psionic or chosen one traits and has a chance to give that admiral a powerful trait. And finally, Imprison, which turns the enemy planet into a shrouded world, killing all of the planet's inhabitants. Next up, the Psychic Hive Siphon. An Empire can only have one of these at any one time and must be built around a star and can't be built around a pulsar, neutron star or black hole. It produces 750 society research, 7500 energy and 5 psionic sublimates. It also grants the Onin Empire 15% FTL speed, 3 sensor range, 7.5% habitability and 15% to research speed for physics and society and 15% to minerals from jobs. Next comes to terraforming and habitats. First up we have a fusion suppressor. This converts regular stars into neutron stars and black holes, which of course damages planets in the system. Compression stage 1 produces 100 physics research, 100 engineering research for 50 energy and 15 alloys upkeep. Compression stage 2 produces 250 physics and engineering research for 250 energy and 50 alloys upkeep. And the neutron star stage produces 300 physics and engineering research for 400 energy and 75 alloys upkeep. The final stage costs 7500 energy, 5000 unity and takes 360 days. This gives the choice of compressing the star into a black hole or detonating it which destroys nearly everything in the system but creates iodysium crystals on anything that survives. If you go the black hole route, it produces 500 physics research, 500 engineering research for 100 alloys upkeep. It can be dismantled for 1000 energy which refunds 10,000 alloys after 360 days. Next we have the interstellar habitat. This creates a habitat that acts as its own star system with no need for a planet or any other celestial body. It can only be built around a star and there can only be one per system. The basic interstellar habitat has a size of 15 and interstellar habitats have unique districts and jobs. It also has the following modifiers, minus 5% happiness, minus 10% energy from jobs and plus 10% research from jobs. Once construction of the interstellar habitat is complete, it is moved to its permanent location out of the solar system it was constructed in. They can then be upgraded into interstellar ring worlds, and you can build two segments on these each. Each interstellar ring world has a size of 10, and they have unique districts and jobs. The Magino world can only be built on planets with the Magino Fort complex buildings, and upon completion the planet changes into a Magino world, which provides a massive defensive army. These will explode and destroy all orbiting ships if the colony is lost, and defensive systems can be upgraded through decisions. And finally, jump drives are blocked two systems out. The orbital arcology must be built around a colonized planet, and it gives the planet a special modifier that adds between 6 and 10 districts to the planet. This depends on the planet's original size, with the large planets of course get more. The orbital Elysium can be built around a planet, moon or asteroid. They have access to special districts and the following modifiers. Plus 10% happiness and plus 10% unity from jobs. The planetary complex must be built around a colonizable planet or a barren, cold barren or frozen world and converts it into a planetary computer. The planetary computing complex provides 100% bonus to science generation and has special districts. The dockyards adds 4 to naval capacity and plus 2% to naval capacity and the uplink building at this stage grants 3 shipyards and 15% ship build speed. Once this is complete you can choose one of the following upgrades. The drive yards which adds 80 naval capacity and 5% to naval capacity and grants the uplink building 6 shipyards, 30% ship build speed, 2 collection range and minus 7% to ship build cost. Or you can go for the Defense Nexus which adds 40 naval capacity, plus 2% naval capacity and plus 25 to fleet command limit. This grants uplink building 3 shipyards and plus 15% to ship build speed. And also spawns 1 planetary guardian army on the source planet for every 10 pops. It also gains access to the Strike Corvette system. These are basically ships that can only fly around the home system and pretty much just act as defense. The Square Worlds cannot be built from scratch and can only be restored if ruined ones are found in the galaxy. 
The system containing the runes has a derelict station in the center, which must be upgraded to obtain a technology to repair the square world. I honestly don't have a lot of intel on these ones because I couldn't find one and I couldn't find any information on them, so sorry. The substellar compressor converts a brown dwarf into an ignited star, making moons more habitable as well as generating physics and energy. Compression produces 50 physics research. Igniting the star costs 5,000 energy, 2,500 units and takes 360 days, and produces 350 energy and 50 physics research. It can then be dismantled for a refund of 1,000 energy and 5,000 alloys after 360 days. Upon ignition, moons of the brown dwarf are turned into lifeless habitable worlds and are given terraforming candidate modifiers. Finally, the titanic ring world must be built on a completed regular ring world. Each of the four sections must also be built individually, and each Titanic Ringworld segment has 20 district slots, as well as a modifier which gives 20 housing. Now we come to military, first up we have the Attack Moon. This converts a molten, barren or frozen world of size 5 to 7 into a celestial warship. The resulting warship can be customised in the ship designer to fit whatever purpose you want, and they have a shockingly large amount of fleet power. The big vat can be built around any celestial body. The primary vat, which is one of the first stages, shockingly unlocks the primary vat, which allows you to construct Prythorin swarm queens, swarm warriors, brood mothers, and swarmlings. The primary vat can also construct the following if you kill them in the galaxy. The Tianki Matriarch, the Blue Wraith, the Void Spawn, the Aether Drake, and the Stellarite Devourer. Each of the three final upgrades unlocks two auxiliary vats, which allow for construction of the Prethorian units. Auxiliary vats 1 unlocks two auxiliary vats, same with auxiliary vats 2, and same with the final stage, for a total of one primary vat and six auxiliary vats. Kaiser Moon is a research option that adds the ability to use Kaiser Moon sections and components on your regular attack moons. Simply head to the ship customizer, pick the new section and modules, and enjoy. The Stellarite Kaiser Moon, however, is a completely different structure. It spawns a non-upgradable Stellarite Kaiser Moon with the following design and buffs. It has a railgun, torpedoes, autocannons, lunar hangars, tier 4 reactor, tier 3 hyperdrive, and tier 4 thrusters and sensors, and it gets the following buffs. 12% damage to hull, armor, and shield, 3% ship rate fire, and plus 100% to ship move speed. The orbital bastion must be built around a planet or a moon, and it grants 30 to naval cap and plus 2 to fleet command. You can then choose to add on each of the following. The military administration branch, which adds 60 naval capacity, for Fleet Command for the cost of 25 upkeep, and the Admiralty Operations, which adds 120 to the Naval Cap, 8 to Fleet Command, and again, 25 NG upkeep. An Empire may own up to 15 Orbital Bastions, 6 Military Administration Branches, and 3 Admiralty Operations. Next we come to the Giga Structures and we're back on Economy. First up, the Hawking Radiation and Accretion Emission Macro Collector. This must be built around a black hole in a surveyed system and requires no pre-existing megastructures other than the Penrose Sphere or orbital stations around the black hole. The Injector Stage produces 500 energy for 35 allies upkeep. The Accretion Collector Stage produces 1,750 energy and 500 physics research for 70 allies upkeep. And the final stage produces 3600 energy, 1250 physics research, and 15 dark matter, and grants minus 15% consumer goods for the Empire at the cost of 175 alloys upkeep. The hyperstructural assembly yard must be built around a class A or B star. At the final stage, this produces 1500 minerals, 1500 naval capacity, provides 40,000 storage for all resources, and plus 75% to ship build speed at the cost of 3000 energy, 3000 engineering research, and 2 influence. Upon completion of the hyperstructural assembly yard inner ring, all planets and asteroid belts in the system will be removed. In order to access the shipyard upgrades, you must build the uplink building in the system starbase, and it gives 90 shipyard capacity, 150 starting ship experience, 200% to ship build speed, and minus 15% to ship build cost. The Matryoshka brain can't be built around neutron stars, pulsars, or black holes, and can't be built in binary or trinary systems, and can't be built in systems with colonized planets. Apart from that, you're all good. At its final stage, it produces 5,000 of each science research and plus 30% all research speed at the cost of 600 alloys and 2 influence. Upon completion, removes all planets and asteroid belts in the system. The cost and output of this, of course, varies via the stellar class. The Matryoshka Reality Simulator must be built around a completed Matryoshka brain. Simulator 1 produces 4,375 of each research for 220 alloys and 1.5 influence. Simulator 2 produces 3,750 for 230 alloys. 1.5 influence. Simulator 3 produces 3,125 for 240 alloys and 1.5 influence. And Simulator 4 produces 2,500 of each research for 250 alloys and 1.5 influence. Each stage also creates a size 10 Matrioska Brain Reality Simulator planet. These are special planets that have perfect habitability but don't allow biological pops to grow, they must instead be resettled. Biological pops on these planets have their food upkeep greatly reduced. Matryoshka Brain Reality Simulator can be upgraded into Matryoshka Brain Industrial Segments or Matryoshka Brain Processing Segment planets by a planetary decision. So your three choices are Reality Segments, Industrial Segments or Processing Segments. 
and depending on the virtual type, some resources are impossible to generate. The Nidavellir Forge must be built around a neutron star or a pulsar of size 10 or higher. This requires no pre-existing megastructures other than the Neutronium Gigaforge or orbitable stations around the star. In its final form, it produces 1500 alloys and grants 5% to monthly alloys, 50% to army damage, 10% to ship weapons damage, and 10% to armor hull points for all ships in the Empire at the cost of 3500 minerals and 1 influence. The Alderaan disk must be built around a star and can't be built in binary or trinary systems. It also can't be built around a neutron, pulsar or black hole systems created by a fusion suppressor. It can't be built in systems with habitable planets or any existing megastructures. Upon completion it removes all planets and asteroid belts in the system and spawns 8 slice segments which each must be given their own specialisation and then built themselves. You have the choice of Gaia, Computing or Yucca Monopolis, and each are a 15 size habitable zone. They also have unique districts which change depending if you are biological, machine or hive mind. Coming to terraforming and habitats, first of all we have the Behemoth Ringworld. These must be built around an existing Titanic Ringworld and create 4 sections on the Ringworld and of course you can build up to 4 sections. Complete Ringworld sections create a single colonizable habitat and tech seam that can be upgraded for another habitat. Each Behemoth Ringworld segment has 30 district slots as well as a modifier that gives 40 housing. And next of course we have the Gargantuan Ringworld. This must be built around an existing Behemoth Ringworld and of course you can build up to 4 sections. These provide up to 40 district slots as well as a modifier which gives 60 housing. The Intertemporal Restorator basically allows you to draw stars from the future to the present, which can then be harvested for energy. Honestly, this is another one knows where I don't have any footage of it because I couldn't work out how to make it, and again, couldn't find any footage of it online. So uh, yeah, I'm not really sure how this one works, but it sounds pretty ridiculous. I do apologize. Next up, we have the Military. First up, we have the Behemoth Assembly Plant, which requires a non-habitable, non-solar celestial body, and it must be built around a star. It allows the construction of fabricated war moons and Behemoth Planet Crafts. Speaking of which, the Behemoth Planet Crafts. If you can build this with the Assembly Plant, or you, convert, or you can convert a molten, barren, toxic, or frozen world above size 24 into a celestial warship. Upon completing the final stage, it removes the planet and spawns a Behemoth Planet Craft ship of a pre-made design in its place. Player is allowed to select the Behemoth Planet Craft loadout, which of course means you can make them suit any occasion to take out any enemy. Of course, being so large, they are kind of weak to more nimble opponents, but it's going to take them a while to take it out, so I wouldn't worry. It takes 250 naval capacity and fleet command. The Nickel Dyson Beam removes every planet and asteroid in the system upon completion and must be built around a system center star of class A or B and can't be built in binary or trinary systems or systems with colonized planets and can't be built by a signatory and you can only build these once. Upon completion it requires 350 alloys and one influence for upkeep and it has multiple firing intensities and options with the more powerful beams taking longer to cool down. You can choose to ruin infrastructure which causes a target planet to become lifeless but habitable and devastation goes to 100%. You can sterilize a planet, which results in the planet becoming barren, but it can be terraformed back. You can melt the planet, which causes the planet to become molten with one iodizium crystal deposit. You can crack the planet, which causes the planet to become shattered and generates 10 mineral deposits. Or you can destroy the system, which of course destroys the system and turns the central star into a neutron star. The cooldown is affected by the megastruct build speed modifiers and of course the option that you pick. Upon completion, it gives 100 opinion to all other empires until first fired and gives minus 50 opinion to fallen empires. The hyperdimensional destabilizer is no one knows that I couldn't build myself and it seems to be to take out a very specific enemy that I didn't seem to encounter in my many playthroughs to, to try and get this. So yep, I, I'm not really sure what it does, but it seems to uh, take out an enemy and also give you some pretty sweet buffs. I'm not going to go over it too much, I do apologize, but um, yep, no clue. Next, the stellar system craft. This must be built around a star and can't be built in binary or trinary systems or systems with habitable planets. The solar compressor stage removes planets and asteroid belts in the system. Alongside their regular costs, you must also use various amounts of attack moons and behemoth planet crafts to finish this construction. The synchronized planetary thrusters require two attack moons and one behemoth planet craft to be built. The lunar supports require two attack moons and the celestial erasers require two behemoth planet crafts. Once the final construction is complete, which requires one attack moon, one planet craft and 40 pops, a stellar system craft may be built for 10,000 alloys over 3,600 days. The player is allowed to select the stellar system craft loadout, much like as is the case with the behemoth planet craft, there are no small weapon slots. This can't be merged into fleets of traditional ships, so you have to take it around by itself and it takes 512 fleet capacity. The Lunar Macro Replicator requires no pre-existing megastructures or orbitable stations around the planet and requires a non-habitable, non-solar celestial body. Once completed, you can then construct attack moons for 30,000 alloys, 5 energy and 7 planetary mass. And finally, we come to Terra Structures, of which there are only two, don't worry, we're nearly done, this video is getting way too long. 
First up, we have the Birch World. This must be built around the inactive Galactic Core Black Hole. And the final stage replaces the Black Hole with the Birch World. And it has four unique district types and can basically house all of your pops forever until the end of time. It is basically an infinite sized planet once you unlock everything. Now, other Terra structure is military and is the quasi stellar obliterator. This must be built around an active Galactic Core and can't be built if there is another megastructure in the system. Constructing the quasi-stellar obliterator may cause all remaining non-gestalt, non-genocidal empires to merge into one super state and declare total war against the owner of this weapon because it is so bad. Upon completion, it creates 10 quasaric energy at the cost of 1,000 alloys and 500 energy. You then have the choice of four uses. Fleet destruction costs 20 energy and destroys all fleet star bases in the target system with infinite range. Planet destruction costs five energy per planet and of course destroys the targeted planet. Solar System Destruction costs 40 energy per star and destroys the entire system, and Star Cluster costs 120 Quasaric energy and destroys the entire targeted systems. And that is all the structures added with this massive mod. I do apologise for the ones I missed and couldn't get much information for. As I said, I searched high and low on Google trying to find information on these but just couldn't, and I tried to use all the console commands to unlock the research to find these ones, and I played for hours. I literally have like two full days into a save when I'm right at the end game, and I should have come across these, but I just could not find them, so I do apologize. I hope you can understand. Let me know what you think of this mod and the structures added in the comments. Let me know which one is your favorite. There are so many cool ones here, but just off the top of my head, that goddamn stellar system craft is an absolute badass, and uh, yeah, that would be terrifying to fight against for sure. Oh, did I didn't mention that the AI can use all these as well. Can you imagine that coming at you from the AI? No, thank you. Of course, leave a like if you did and subscribe if you want to see more. And if you feel a particularly big penis, you can become a supporter of the channel, either right here on YouTube by becoming a member or over on the Patreon by becoming a patron. Doing so gets your access to behind the scenes of upcoming videos, also gets your exclusive and more powerful voting power and discounts on all merch. I'd like to, of course, thank all supporters, but in particular, Henry Tugger, Fist Part of the Officers tier. One more thank you for watching, and for now, I've been Colonel Damders, and I will see you next turn.